Hey, welcome back to another application tutorial for Enterprise Java. In this tutorial, we're going to extend the work that we did previously. If you were to be with us on the last video, you saw that we created a bunch of business class rules. So we have a business service and another alternative to that called another business service. What we're going to do is add some actual content here. You can see that our current process is very simple. All we have is a test method. So in this video, we're going to create two more methods, one for get orders, another one for set orders, and these business uh, processes will actually generate some data for our application. So let's start by looking at the interface. That's the blueprint after all. And we're going to tell the interface to create two new promises. We're going to create a, an, a method that we'll call get orders. Looks to me like we need to import a few things. We need to import the list utility, and we also need to import the order object. So the order object is something we created a few videos ago. An order object is simply an item that has four properties in it, such as the product number, the name, the price, and the quantity. And so our method will return a list of orders. We're going to create another method called set orders, and it too will work with a list of orders. Looks to me like we need a, a type for this. Uh, let's choose void. All right, so that sets up the promises that we're going to create. Immediately, you see over on the left side that there is an error on the two objects that are generated from this interface. So let's go check this one out here. So if I hover over the error, it says uh, you're missing a couple of methods that you promised to create in the interface. So let's try this. Add unimplemented methods, and we get an override for both of the methods that we just created. Let's work next in the uh, public uh, constructor area for our, our business object here. What we need to do is generate a list of orders and uh, whenever this is created. Now we've already done that back here, so I'm going to copy some code from the orders area, and I'm going to just copy the exact list that we created earlier and put it into this uh, business service here. Got ourselves a, a way to create a bunch of orders. However, it's going to say uh, you don't have any variable called orders, so let's take the suggestion and create one. And that doesn't belong here, sorry, it belongs up at the top of our uh, object here. So let's put it right after the list there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, let's save the changes, and we're going to do another business service here. So let's go and do much the same. And this one, it looks like I have not created a constructor yet. So let's create another orders business services constructor. Okay, so we got our constructor, and let's let's go back into the orders area, and let's copy our list, and let's use that as our example. However, we do not want to have the exact same data output for the uh, alternative business service. So let's create something a little bit different. So I'm just going to use product letters instead of numbers, and then I'll put in different descriptions. So it looks like we need another list here for our orders. So let's come up to the top here and let's create a list. And let's call it a list of order and what's going to call it orders. Well, what are we missing here? I've still got an error. It says you need to implement some methods. So let's choose implement and methods and here they come. So if I choose a method called get orders, I want to actually return the list of orders. So fortunately, I have the variable called orders there. So I will use that as my return value. For setting the orders, let's take a look at this. Let's take a this dot 
orders object and we'll set that to the word orders as well. Looks like in business service we better do the same thing. So return the number of orders we got and for the uh, set we're going to say set the uh, orders and that's going to be So that's going to be the value from our local variable here. So now our business service is the one that is creating this uh, orders list. So this orders object over here looks to me like it's no longer in use. So I'm going to delete this and uh, our app should be able to work now. So we still need to define what an order is, but in here we are creating the list in the uh, business service. That's going to cause some errors. So if we go down to the test response page, we are looking for an object that is no longer in use. So it says uh, our orders table is going to come from the object called orders. So now we want to be able to get that from the business service. So how do we do that? If I type in a pound sign and a open, uh, I don't have uh, orders anymore. I just deleted it. I do have form controller and user. Let's see what form controller can give us. So form controller dot and I just have on submit. So I need a method here that will link my, uh, my, my business service to the JSF form. So we got some work to do here. We can do that inside of our controller object. So inside of here we're looking for a method that we can use to pass through our business service because we have access to it here. So let's, let's create a method and call it uh, return or get services or something like that. So let's say public order business Okay, so my, my method is going to look like this. So get service and let's see, we need to add a return statement. So return services, that's the object type. And so if I put that in here, I should be able to see something in my test response page. So test response page, let's start this again. I'm going to delete the uh, item that's linked to our table. And let's see, I'm going to type in form controller and then a period. And this time I have service. And let's see, I type another period and look at there, I get the word orders. And so that allows me to use the business service rather than linked to some object in the beans table. Let's save the changes and let's run our test form and let's hope for some responses on our page. Okay, so you can see we've got an error going on, uh, a null string. Let's go check out our, uh, our business service here. Pretty sure that when we created orders here, we don't want to just leave it null. So we have to create a new array list of type order. Okay, so we have to import array list and let's save it here. And we're going to do the same thing in the another business service. So let's say that equals a new array list of type order. And that is the correct way to, Im to uh, initialize an array list. Okay, let's save it and let's run the app again. Okay, so you can see that our results now are showing that we have uh, product A from the alternative BS. And let's go change our beans uh, XML file here and let's uh, modify this instead of another order business service. Let's delete the word another save the work here, rerun the page, and hopefully we have a different set of data. There you go. So we're back to the original set that says this is product one. All right, so that demonstrates now that our business service is uh, kind of doing a little bit more work than it was before. And we're still getting the messages down below that says, hey, we're testing out to see if we've got version one in action, but the data is coming from a generated list in the business service. Now you still might say this is a this is a pretty lame business service. All it does is create this static list. 
Yes, the real way that this would probably work is we would create a connection to a database and then we would read from the database and then create a list and return the list. So we're still getting to the database part. That's coming in a couple more videos. But for right now, this is uh, just some dummy data that's created in a simulation of a business service.